Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of You Journeys. I'm your host, Balesa Ramafola, coming to you from our JBS Park studios. And today we are joined by our very own incredible Prof Bui, the HOD of the Physics Department. In 2014, Prof Bui was the first woman in Africa to be awarded a doctoral degree in the field of experimental physics in highly correlated matter. Prof Bui is a great example of how anything is possible with education especially for those who may come from underprivileged backgrounds. Prof Bui, welcome to You Journeys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Palissa. Oh, Thank you for lovely. welcoming me. Yeah. It's been a beautiful morning and uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much again. Guys, the day is as beautiful as Prof right now. Women in STEM. <laughs> we you. have the one and only Prof in STEM. Please, not just women in STEM. This is a Prof in STEM. And you know, I just want to tap into a few questions and just mm -hmm. start with whether you wanted to become this woman in STEM and if it's actually been a childhood dream to become a scientist. Mm -hmm. How did we get here? You, I had never thought that I would end up here, although mm. I wanted to be a difference maker. Mm. In fact, I grew up wanting to be a medical doctor. Oh. So I wanted to solve problems, so that's who mm. I am. I wanted to get uh, or to find the cure for AIDS. Unfortunately, my route didn't take me there, and then I ended up doing BSc, where mm. I, I measured uh, with uh, physics, chemistry, and statistics. And then I fell in love with physics. Mm. <laughs> and then I said, I know that most people say physics is difficult, physics is not for women. And something kicked in in me and said, I want to prove that women can do it. Okay, so would you say that was your moment of, I'm entering this male-dominated field, you cannot stop me, this is mine now? Exactly. Mm. I wanted to, to be the difference maker. I wanted to, to solve difficult problems. I of wanted course. to to also show that women can do it, irrespective of what the, the stigma is out there about difficult subjects, difficult roles that yeah. they can take. But um, I wanted to show that there's something in women that people might start admiring because there is strength, there is power, there is wisdom. There is also uh, <laughs> perseverance. For yes. sure. In Moroto, yes. guys, come on. <laughs> a woman, you know, a woman. I understand. So would you say that science in particular is an, it's a gift? Or do we think that with the right support system and with you know the right processes going forward, one can actually get themselves into that field? Because like you mentioned, physics is hard. Some people have that understanding from the time they're in high school, and so people shy away from what's hard. You know, quick money. Yeah, <laughs> I think you've asked two questions there. You've asked a question whether is science for everyone, or whether is science. Um, something that people can do just because they love or just because they need money so yeah yeah i, I know that this is a field that uh, is um questionable in terms of getting money afterwards but you do it because you want to to fulfill something within you yeah right you you do it because it's a, an ambition you do it because it's passion that you yes. have and then now i want to come to the part whereby you're saying are we doing science simply because we have a fiber of science in us? Can science be learned by everybody? I think that's a question that we might try to, to ask here. Earlier on, if you had asked me this question, I would say, yes, everybody can, can study science. But now with, with growth and maturity, I'm realizing that there are things that probably cannot be cracked by everybody else. And then people must tend to focus on their strength. Right. So if I focus yeah. on my strength, I become the best in that area. So if you have a DNA that can take on the science, you need to grow it, you need to, to utilize and leverage on that strength. Then mm -hmm. you can be able to, to, to break open other avenues in science. But if you know for sure that even if I've tried everything that I could try, I still cannot do it. That means you need to focus on where your strength is and then become the best in that area. I know that some, some student might say, I did not pass well in metric, I did not get a 7 and a, a, a seven or, or a 6. There are some students that I can tell you about who didn't get 7 or a 6, who got 2 or 3 in mathematics and physical science, but somehow they find their way in into the field. And today these sure. people are getting to be doctors, others are professors, others are mm. doing things that we never thought they could do. 
simply because there was a seed and the right attitude. Right. As you guys heard, everything starts with the seed and the right, the right attitude. attitude. And remember to water your seed, guys, hey? Exactly. The ingredients matter. <laughs> and I think that's really something we had to hear today. Mm -hmm. Do you mind letting us know? So you pursued your MBA here at the Johannesburg Business yes. School. After receiving the doctoral award in 2014, yes. how did we get there? How did we get back into school? Mm. <sighs> I've never stopped learning. Mm. I know that learning comes in, in, in many ways. There's a formal and informal learning. Yeah. So when I was chosen to be part of UJ Women Leadership Program, mm. which was hosted mm. by JBS by anyway, I found the, the program very interesting because it captured a number of uh, topics. Yeah. And I realized that some of those topics were dealing with the leader within us. Yeah. And what better way of doing that than to know leadership from various perspectives that you can even apply it in your in your in your area. Mm. I know that it's called MBA because we think we only apply those skills in business. Mm. But I want us to understand yeah. that life is business. Oh for sure. <laughs> life is business, guys. Make that a caption. Life is business. So yeah. at the end of the day, if I don't know how to do life, how to deal with life, how to deal with people who are around my life, mm. then I won't be uh, I won't be fruitful. I won't be able to be impactful. In way for, sure, I so for sure, for sure. That's what led me into doing MBA because I understood it's a degree that was going to open me to many, many avenues. Mm -hmm. The avenue that started from within, started mm -hmm. from myself, to my immediate uh, people, to the, the, the department, to the company, and all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why wow. I, I, I chose to do MBA. And I, I know there's still many more doors to be open. That's lovely. So this is not just your MBA, it's the MBA for your community yes. <laughs> because life is business life is business and prof we <laughs> means business she's standing on business not just atoms okay guys she's yeah. standing on business <laughs> and you know yeah. we just want to ask you you know for those who want to pursue their mba or mm -hmm. those currently pursuing their mba what advice would you have for them because as you've just debunked that myth that mba is just you know business practical mm -hmm. what other advice do you think people need to hear this Particularly for those who are doing MBA at the moment, I think they have already felt or they're already feeling how, how MBA is. It's not a degree that you will do uh, because you have time. You do it because you don't have time. You do it because you're already in business. You do it because you want to solve something. All right. So it means because of a multifaceted dimension of what you are busy with, you as a person doing it must be prepared mentally. Mm, mm, mm. MBA is not difficult, but it needs mental preparedness. Mm, yeah. It needs um, time management. It needs you to be there. Mm. I've seen that most of us do it, but we are not there. We mm. do it with, we think uh, it's something that I can get even if I'm continually studying or I'm continually working, I can get it. Mm. It's just a, a postgraduate. No, mm. it's something that needs you. Mm -hmm. We do understand that you are working, but you have to be there for you to be able uh, to be changed by what the MBA is going to give you. If you can't exert yourself in, the, in that manner, mm. number one, you won't be impactful in where you will be when you, when you leave yeah. because you will rush over the assignments you know, without mm. understanding what, so what they taught you. Chasing deadlines. <laughs> you're chasing deadlines, but you're not grasping the concept that you need to grasp. Number mm. two, you might not finish it on time and at the end of the day it bores you mm. or it texts you or it makes you feel like I'm getting drained. Sure. You know, at the end of the day, you, you get it and you don't enjoy it. Mm, so mm. it needs you. Yeah. Be there. That's so true. Yeah, be there for it. Yeah, no, for sure. So as you know, here at UJ, we're very, you know, impact-based. We love to do this impact thing and impact the society in many ways possible. So mm. in your field, are there anything, any, any projects that you've worked on that have actually impacted the society practically here in real life? Care to tell us about those? Wow. You're talking about the, the difference makers. Yes, the difference makers, the, <laughs> the room difference changers makers. and shakers. Yes, in my field, mm. I'm more of a community builder, if I, if I have mm. to call myself as that. Although I, I'm more of a scientist in the lab, mm. but I want to take my efforts, my ability, my time to the people who don't have. Mm -hmm. So what I've done, I think, from 2016, 2017, all the way up until now, I've taken the lab, Mm -hmm. to the rural areas, wow. to students who don't have resources because mm -hmm. I know how it feels to don't have a lab, to don't have a library, to don't have a test tube. And you see it in the book, they tell you about the test tube. Eesh. And I had to make it uh, my, my, my duty to ensure that people who don't have 
learn from me. People who don't have at least can get some kind of comfort from what I'll do. Mm -hmm. So most of the projects that I'm doing is community based. So I go teach maths and science in rural places. I target more those places that have uh, debilitated uh, buildings who don't have mm -hmm. roofs, don't have chairs. I can show For you. Sure. Been, yeah, I can even show you pictures where, where I've been last month. In fact, this month I went to Northwest. So where the school doesn't have roof, uh, the community Eesh. has stolen some of the resources, the chairs are not there. No. So we take the lab there, we take mathematics to those schools, we take uh, physical science, we take some learn uh, some students from the university, we go mm. there. So while I'm there teaching them how to understand physics and mathematics from a better way of dealing with it, not from the book point of view. Mm. I know that some of the problems that um, learners and students have is that we are unable to unpack these these subjects hey. so by god's grace i found a way of delivering this in such a manner that most of the people will understand it so it has to be taught mm -hmm. from the concept that people would understand from their environment, from their mm -hmm. surroundings. So when I talk about energy, I need to talk about something that they'll know. I need to talk about mm -hmm. fire that they make every day and the mm -hmm. power of fire. How do they use fire to, to get energy? So, you know, so it speaks from, I speak science from their environment, from their surroundings. So these mm -hmm. have been bearing results because we've seen many of the students coming to our institution, wow. to the department. I've witnessed many, many students to, who come to me and say, you know, I saw you uh, somewhere and that's why I'm here. Aww. I did science because I saw you and I did science because that you came beautiful. to my school. And I don't even know those students. Hey. <laughs> Silent impact. Yes, so like, mm -hmm. like today, these are the students that I have under my care, I have in the department. So oh, I would wow. say my greatest impact is with the people societally out there, people who oh, need wow. our, our, our real help. That's beautiful. You're the hands and feet outside. Exactly. That, oh, you know, I'm a crier, by the way. <laughs> I have glasses because that is, it's just so wholesome. We yeah. need people like you, yeah. especially in unreachable places, yes. you know. Yeah. And the dreamers are there. The, the dreamers are the there. The people who change things, the ones yeah. that shake yeah. everything, they are there. Beautiful. That's how I do it. We love your work. <laughs> we love your hands. We love you. You Thank are you. doing amazing work. Oh. Speaking of the news and TV, yeah. what do you think about Big Bang Theory? Oh, that was my, my love. Oh, wow. <laughs> love at first atom, not at sight, first atom. First atom. atom. <laughs> I don't love at watching TV, mm -hmm. but I watched Big Bang. <laughs> wow. That was the only thing that I was watching, and then I'd watch news, and then I'm done. No, you and know. makes perfect sense. Yeah. Would you say that was one of the ingredients? in your you know your free time slash career you know sort of fine-tuning what you you are purposed for in that science field and just having your own people there on tv as well because those are low-key people you get me yeah. <laughs> i got to see a diverse uh, fields number one i got mm. to see characters within the science field and I didn't just watch it to understand the jokes, but I understood the sciences as, as well. Because, oh, right. Yeah, because there, there is life science, there is a, an, an astrophysicist, there's a theoretical physicist, there's an experimental physicist. Wow. Although I'm not, yeah. an, I'm not a, a theoretical physicist, but I love Sheldon because in Sheldon you get, uh, you get to see the real person. Mm. <laughs> and uh, Sheldon doesn't just che uh, teach you science, he also teaches you faith. <laughs> sure. This because, is an interesting I'm, I'm, show, hey? Yeah, because he, he teaches you faith. Why am I saying that? Whatever Sheldon wants, he gets. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether the person wants to give or not. He just said, you are driving me today. And uh, whether hmm. you plan that or not, because the word is spoken, so it had to happen. <laughs> hey, yeah, ne? Science from a TV perspective. Yes. I like that. I like that. That's very... Yeah, that's why I was like, no, I love this character. I want to be like him in terms of approaching things. Yeah, good approach. It's a good approach he, to things. Good approach to things. And and Sheldon doesn't ever say, I can't do it. Hmm. He can do it even through you. Sure. <laughs> I know that's he can, right. He, he's always <laughs> doing it. He can drive. He can ask Amy. He can ask, uh, who's this other guy? Uh, the friend that he was staying with. You see characters. Yes, I'm telling you. He can't drive, but he can get to places where he wants to be. So he can't do it, but he can do it through you. So, <laughs> guys, if you take anything out of this show, yeah. this is your number one inspiration, right? Prof Pui herself. Number two is Sheldon. Yeah. There is some very interesting yeah. life lessons yeah. from the both of you right now that <laughs> I'm taking home. Mm. You know, and I just want to 
hopefully I'm funny and I can, you know, tickle your funny bone, but here's a little joke. Yeah. So when Neutron walks into a bar and he asks for a beer. Mm -hmm. And you know what the bartender you know what the bartender says? Yeah. For you, no charge. <laughs> <laughs> My no friend, charge. no charge, no charge, no charge. Because you, you're not bringing any charge, so I'm not giving any charge. Exactly. <laughs> All the people who got that joke, please comment down below. We're having the time of our lives here. Yeah, I'm the new comedian. I made her free cute. laugh, so give me my flowers while I can still smile there. Wow. Thank Great. you. That was and so your man, thank you so much, Prof. Bui. It's been amazing having you here, you know. Cute. I've learned so much. I know they've learned so much and we cannot wait to, you know, have you back on our show one of these other days and just, you know, perhaps delve into these interesting projects because I may be the next scientist. Who knows? It's never too late. That's one thing I learned with life. It's yes, never too it's late. Never too you late. know, you can always off ramp. And don't define yourself by a number. Right? Don't just mm. say I'm X number of years. So that's for a sure, number. For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And again, thank, thank you. you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much, Palissa. Thank you to everyone. Blessings to you. <laughs>